Throughout the production process of Amazon's Rings of Power, one element that has continued to baffle me is their unusual marketing strategy. For the longest time, there were very few details released about the series apart from the setting, general premise, and production crew and casting announcements. In the earliest stages of their marketing campaign, this project was assumed to be an adaptation of Tolkien's various Middle-earth writings of the Second Age, especially after the show's social media account teased a Second Age map of Middle-earth. Amazon was apparently fine with letting fans believe this was the case for years until the premiere of the series drew closer. Eventually, the studio had to reveal that this production was actually not an adaptation, but a story created by J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay based on the limited source material referencing the Second Age, largely from the appendices from the Lord of the Rings novels. Though Tolkien had outlined roughly 3,400 years of Middle-earth Second Age history, Amazon did not have the rights to adapt those specific stories. Amazingly, the studio still thought it was a good idea to allow the showrunners to make up a new story for themselves, loosely based on and inspired by the small amount of source material they did acquire the rights to. Despite this revelation that Amazon's Rings of Power series is not an adaptation of Tolkien's Second Age stories after all, the showrunners Payne and McKay continue to vehemently push back against any who attempt to point this out. In this video, I want to examine the showrunner's remarks given at the Television Critic Association's semi-annual press tour panel, as covered by an article from The Hollywood Reporter, and consider the reasons why Amazon refuses to be upfront and honest about the many liberties and deviations they are making from Tolkien's works. The Hollywood Reporter article highlighted what was described as a lean-forward moment when a reporter called the Rings of Power show only, quote, vaguely connected to author J.R.R. Tolkien's work compared to Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings movies, which were based on actual printed materials. The showrunners apparently took issue with this description of their show, saying, quote, I just want to sort of quibble with the vaguely connected. We don't feel that way. We feel like deep roots of this show are in the books and in Tolkien. And if we didn't feel that way, we'd all be terrified to sit up here. We feel that this story isn't ours. It's a story we're stewarding that was here before us and was waiting in those books to be on Earth. We don't feel vaguely connected, we feel deeply, deeply connected to those folks and work every day to even be closer connected. That's really how we think about it. I'm simply baffled that Payne and McKay are so adamant to promote the idea that they are adapting Tolkien's stories, claiming that their show has deep roots in the Middle-earth he created, when that is just not the case. As multiple articles from various mainstream news outlets have reported, this show is best described as being inspired by Tolkien's works. As Entertainment Weekly's exclusive look at The Rings of Power stated, quote, The Rings of Power isn't a direct adaptation of an existing Tolkien novel. Instead, it's inspired by the author's extensive notes published in the appendices to The Lord of the Rings. Even the official trailers continue to label this series as one that is based on Tolkien's writings. And given the facts regarding their rights, by all accounts, it's more accurate to describe the show as one that is only loosely based on his words, considering the many creative liberties the showrunners have taken. In view of the fact that they are compressing thousands of years of history down to one point in time, changing the sequence of events with characters like Isildur being born before the creation of the Rings of Power and the War of Sauron and the Elves, it's also apparent that Tolkien's well-established characters and their journeys will be very different as the series continues. For example, Galadriel is now presented as an angry, brash warrior being, quote, full of piss and vinegar. She will also have an extensive storyline in Numenor, which didn't happen in Tolkien's lore. The show's creators have also changed the story of Tar Mariel, who, as Tolkien wrote, Though she would have been the queen of Numenor, her rule was usurped by her cousin, Arpharazon, when he married her against her will. As it is in Rings of Power, the show starts with the character already ruling as queen regent. The showrunners also felt it was proper to invent a sister to Isildur, changing even well-established family histories. 
These changes are facts that cannot be denied. Though defenders of the show will insist that the entire series is released before any criticisms can be viewed as valid, the revelation of these changes within what has been officially released highlights some undisputable issues that cannot be fixed regardless of how the rest of the series plays out. After considering all of this, I can't help but wonder how the showrunners can claim their show has deep roots in Tolkien's mythology when they are in fact changing so much. But the question I find myself repeatedly asking is why do they feel it necessary to convince us, including both the casual viewers and the hardcore fans, that they are making a faithful adaptation when it is abundantly clear they are not? Even in the face of such clear evidence, they desperately want us to believe they are honoring Tolkien's works, and in an attempt to justify their actions, they continue to imply that the author is somehow speaking to them as they dig deep in his works. I first noticed this kind of claim from Patrick McKay in the Comic-Con interview as he attempted to explain the choice to give the elves short haircuts when he said that not all elves look the same and that in the books it sure felt like that's what Tolkien was saying. So instead of pointing to a specific example or citing a specific passage where the author would have allowed for such a description, they seem to want fans to trust their ability to read Tolkien's mind by digging deep in his writings in order to make such unnecessary changes. I find that they simply refuse to give evidence to justify their changes, and it's frustrating that they continue to march out vague answers without any real foundation in Tolkien's work. What I have found in examining each interview with the showrunners are responses that consistently come across as either willfully deceitful or willfully ignorant. This is the same issue with there being an extensive Hobbit story featured in their Second Age show, something that directly contradicts Tolkien's writings. Payne and McKay continue to double down on the lie that Harfoots are not Hobbits. As I've stated in previous videos, Tolkien was not silent on this matter, as he wrote many details regarding the history of hobbits. It is plainly stated that Harfoots are hobbits, and there is simply no room to misinterpret what Tolkien wrote. So as they continue to promote the series, I'm surprised more than anything by their insistence that the fans believe their lies, even with the evidence right in front of us in Tolkien's words. While some questions surrounding the other changes that have been made involve speculation that is being done due to rights issues, the fact remains that the Harfoot change in particular is one that directly contradicts source material that they do have the rights to. So my question is, at what point will the showrunners admit that they are making changes to what has been firmly established? With what we've heard from them so far, I don't think there is a line they won't cross. I honestly would be able to maintain a measure of respect for Payne and McKay's work if they were at least honest about what they were doing with Rings of Power. If out of the gate, they were upfront about their limited rights and their endeavor to try to create a Middle-earth story worthy of the Lord of the Rings name, given what the Tolkien estate has allowed them to do. Of course, their honesty would also have to be coupled with an earnest endeavor to work within the boundaries of Tolkien's writings. Frustratingly, however, neither is true. But I'm curious to know what you think of the showrunner's comments in defense of their approach to making the Rings of Power. Do you think their claims of the series being deeply rooted in Tolkien's world are at all credible? Would you be inclined to give them credit had they been more honest and upfront about their deviations from Tolkien's work? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.